Johnny Ray, welcome back to another segment of The Basement. I'm joined here today with a few familiar faces. We have Dawson, reoccurring member and co-host over here. What's up? And also um, his, uh, his companion. I forget your companion's name. Dog. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have uh, joining us today, um, Victor. He's also a recurring member, and this is his second time being on with us. So we appreciate you coming out here with us, Vic. Thank you uh, for sacrificing your time and your efforts. Thanks for having me. And then uh, we also have Robin here with us today. This is her first time, so thank yes. you and welcome to the show. Um, so um, for the most part, um, I was thinking about this the other day, and uh, a lot of things are opening up again uh, due to COVID, um, and I've seen like uh, Disneyland's like uh, uh, thinking about opening again, and also um, so Universal is open and everything. So then I'm all thinking like other things are opening up, and now churches are opening back up. Mm. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, as I was thinking about this the other day, uh, churches opening back up. Uh, who is going to come back to church in person? I know a lot of people have been doing it online, and a lot of people kind of just stop doing it in general, and they kind of feel like uh, like they don't have to anymore, or there's like some reason. But it made me feel like there has been times where people have stopped going to church or have felt like they shouldn't go to church anymore for one reason or the other. Uh, COVID being an excuse to stop going to church, but how many people are actually gonna return to church? Mm. And what is preventing people from coming back if they are not coming back? Mm. So that was kind of like my big thought about that. Uh, what do you think, Dawson? That's, well, that's interesting that you um, kind of related Disney and, and church as a, <laughs> as a nice little connection. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry, one more time. I don't know. I just, I just no, no, no. appreciated like, that. Yeah. No. How do you feel about like um, people people like, coming back coming back into church, but also like for people also having reasons not to come back to church? I think right now it's a it's a really interesting time. Um, we're in a global pandemic, and you know people are getting vaxxed, but it's still not technically enough. And, you know, a lot of people have genuine concerns, especially right now, of, you know, if, if I go back, is it safe for me to go back? You know, a lot of people are worried about their health. Um, and then you have people, like you said, that uh, just maybe don't want to go back for their own personal reasons. Um, I think... I think people that um, weren't going to come back already... You know, this kind of is like an excuse to not come back, you know, because like, I mean, you have I, I, lukewarm people, you know, that were just, they just kind of came to church, but they weren't really participating. You know, it's like the type of people where it's like, oh, yeah, if I sit in the back and I make it by sermon, then I'm good. You know, I do duty as a you know, Christian. You're checking off that box. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, all right, well, I, I went to church, so. You yeah, know, I could say that I'm a good person, kind of thing, almost. Uh -huh. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so I think, I think people who are already kind of like leaving, um, or like kind of on the, you know, like on that on the fence of leaving, are just gonna leave, mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah. Um, and right now, it's just a perfect excuse and opportunity. Yeah. Because yeah. um, a lot of, I mean, I mean, from what I've seen, a lot of people struggle with being um, in a form of organized religion and being in a church. Um, 
like I've, I've had a lot of friends that, uh, that grew up in a faith, uh, Adventism. And, you know, as time grew on, they just, you know, they, they get their independence growing up and, you know, they have their teens and, you know, now they're out and about doing this and that, going here and there. And they just slowly, slowly start straying away um, from the church. I don't know if you ever experienced stuff like that, mm. but mm. I mean, I've, I've seen it. I mean, we've, we've all had our own struggles. Um, I don't know what you guys have individually been through, but um, yeah. And, and I think at one point, you know, um, even just being younger, uh, being in the church, um, for me, I didn't start going to church until I was like already older. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of feel like I made that decision to come to church and I kind of really stuck with it. Um, as for like the struggle to stick with it, um, you know, some things uh, seem like like burdensome in a church and um, you know, kind of go over that in a little bit, but I wanted to see what um, maybe Vic or um, Robin had to say about that. Yeah, can you re say the question again, sorry? Yeah, so um, I just kind of wanted to know like how you feel about like at this point in time, well, it could also just be like kind of what Dawson was saying, just like in people in general, how like uh, they've been in church and kind of don't want to come back or mm -hmm. find a reason to not come back to church. Yeah. Or um, also just like in general, if you kind of can see um, how people are using kind of COVID as an excuse to not really come back to church anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I guess the way I see it is that I mean, the, when the church was open, it feels like, you know, people would come here because they've had such a long week and they have, they could spend time with their family. But now that they're, they don't really have that time because mm -hmm. there's so many other things they could do on Saturday that it's kind of like a, a relationship, you know, like if, if nobody even checks up on them, how do you expect them to come? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, that's the way I see it. Like if you don't, if you're in a relationship, you don't talk to that person at all. How do you expect them to, that relationship to work? Right. Right. So if they're like far away, like an hour away and nobody calls them, contacts them, maybe they're still going through the same stuff. Yeah. But just to see how they're doing. Um, maybe this time made them realize like, man, maybe my church doesn't care. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's just something to yeah. think yeah. about, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to piggyback off what Victor said um, and what Dawson said, how I, I do. I've had personally experienced where. Going to church is just a check off. Like, okay, I made it to a sermon. I can go home yeah. and do whatever I want to do. Um, but just like what Victor's saying is that um, I didn't have that connection with the church. I didn't have anyone checking up on me or um, where, you know, we could, I guess, not motivate me to go, but like kind of like, you know, there's other people that I can connect with and talk to and actually hang out with and fellowship with. Um, and so I feel like... Um, Right now, you know, going back, people going back to church, there is, you know, personal reasons as well um, due to health. Um, and so, but I think maybe reasons that maybe people are not going back, it may, might be, you know, because there's no, like, no one's checking up on them. There's no connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That friendship, you know, where you can build that connection with other youth. And, yeah, like you the, know, fellowship similar, didn't, the fellowship. The fellowship. Yeah. yeah. Like in the midst of. I think that was really hard, you know, like mm -hmm. trying to continue a fellowship with mm -hmm. with uh, just your close knit people. Even like a few of my friends that I used to see like every other week, it just feels like due to this, it's like hard to stay connected. And it's kind of like, you know, it's always in the back of your head. Well, you know, like I don't really know if like this is 100 percent safe mm. to go visit somebody because yeah. it's like health reasons but also like um on the other hand you know you just get so consumed in like you know people are you know quarantining themselves still some people are staying at home and you kind of get consumed in the like whatever you're doing at home and you don't really reach out as much or whatever mm -hmm. but i think staying connected into the fellowship is like a really good thing but to get back on like topic of what i was saying earlier is that like there are people who have kind of been in church they're their whole lives or just even been brought up in the church or whatever. And at one point or another, they 
didn't feel the need or want to be here anymore in church or involved because the church is the people it's not the building although people come to this building but we are the church so like for us if we want to go get fit we go to the gym i i have weights at home but i feel like i work out so much better at the gym and so like you could have us your spiritual walk you could be good at home doing your own individual bible studies or whatever but when you come to church it's like like a full on spiritual workout pretty much and mm. you get you get it all in but um in some cases church has become like a burden for some people and then it doesn't become like a connected thing anymore it um you you kind of feel um well, in a way, disconnected uh, for one reason or the other. You could be going through something personally and you feel like nobody understands you and you kind of just kind of drift away at that point. Or you could be connected or like connected in the church, but just not feel like there's a real reason keeping you here. Do you think a lot of that, like like what you just said, like those mindsets and mentalities, do you think that plagues a lot of our young? Because I... I I've, I mean, a lot of people have noticed that, like, over the last, I don't know, we'll just say 10, 20 years, that, like, it's been an epidemic of just youth leaving the church. You know, they'll, they'll be raised in the church. You know, they'll be, they'll, they'll be anywhere from, like, kind of active to, like, very, very active. And then it'll just be, like, over the course of, like, six months, they'll just drop out. Yeah. Um I guess from my own experience, like working with like a lot of young people that are in like high school and stuff with mm -hmm. different churches, like yeah. especially with COVID, like before, obviously I would try to connect with everybody, talk to everybody as much as possible. Um, I remember one incident where this church member gave me her number and it was like right when COVID, before everybody, we started closing down the church. Yeah, like in March. Yeah. And she gave me her number and I, I just put it on my phone and, and then she texted me and then I was like, oh, hey, it's nice to hear from you. She texted me and she's like, well, it would have been great if I would have heard from you first. I was like, oh, wow. That was kind of rebuking to me because I was like, man, I should really be, you know, texting or emailing church members. Yeah. But then I thought to myself, a lot of the, like, um, like teenagers, the youth, they, they go to academies that are, like, private, right? Mm. They go there for four years mm. when they come home, like, during the holidays. But then they finish from there, but they never hear anything from their church members. Yeah. Like, they don't get, like, a care, uh, you know, a care package or a phone call or, like, a video. I mean, from what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. and they're stuck there and then they end up going to college for another four years so then that's eight years that they're not even in church yeah they're going to the academy but yeah they're, just, they're not connected yeah they're not connected with their local church and that the people that care for them you know because sometimes they think like oh this is like this is where my parents want me but little do they know like the churches help them a lot like with paying their tuition or with a certain part of it you know yeah and they end up going to college and graduating and don't realize what the church actually did for them. Yeah. So. And so it's kind of like forgetting their, their blessing from, that they've gotten from church because they just get caught up in just the fast pace. Yes. Life. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to uh, kind of like understand it because I didn't really grow up in the church. Yeah. So it's like, if I don't want to go to church, I'm not going to go to church. It's that easy to me. You know? Yeah. Like, but now it's different. But I mean, the way I see the young people like do it, they just don't want to come. It's because nobody cares for them. Nobody talks to them. Yeah. They view them as that they're not really doing anything. Um, let Sorry. me know if I talk too much. No, no, no. I want to no, say no. something hey, else me. too. Okay. Like I went to talk. Yeah. I, I went to this, uh, to this church and it was interesting to me because this person was preaching, right? Mm -hmm. This elder. And pretty much they were talking about how like young people, like his whole message was on young people. I was like, oh, I sat down, I sat down, and I was paying attention, and I was like, wow, this is gonna be good. And then he starts talking about how young people just need to focus in school right now, like just focus on your school, don't worry about the church, don't worry about anything else, just work, focus on school. And in my head, I'm like, like we're thinking, like, why aren't they coming back? Just because you're telling them, like, focus on what you're doing <laughs> this now. This is the worst message ever. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. But I literally, that's how I felt, and I was yeah. like, man, that's like so discouraging to youth. They're like, yeah, well, that's what my dad wants me to do, he wants me to finish my degree and. And, you know, obviously when you're in college, I mean. Yeah, there's want, a lot of pressure there. Yeah, they, you want yeah. to experience di different things, you know. Yeah. Some of my friends, they would went to like like PUC and they only went there because it was a party school, even though it's an Adventist school. Yeah. 
you know, or Southern, or it, it doesn't really matter if, uh, even if it's an Adventist school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, Let's use a specific. Yeah, okay. it's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean, it's certain youth are going to go there because they want to have fun. Yeah. You know, and even like this, um, I think he was like this. He's like the youth coordinator for the general conference. And he pretty much he's like young people want to do crazy things. He's like they want to do things that they just they want to die for. Like they're willing to die for stuff like they're wanting to do something crazy. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And it's like, you know, they, that's why the reason why they, they jump and do um, bungee jumping or like skydiving. They want to do something crazy. Why don't you tell them to go do something crazy to do a mission trip like super far? That's crazy. And they'll yeah. go do it. You know what? That's a good point because uh, I think um, I think a few years back we had sent like a bunch of young people out to Nicaragua and they came back like like just totally mind blown. Just like they came back just saying this was super cool, a great experience. And these are like people that like I would have never thought that they would have. I thought they would have been like, it's so boring over there. I'm glad we're home. They were just like, it was cool. Are those youth that was here? Yeah, that was here. No. And are those youth still in the church? Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and I want to get down, if, if you wanted to add anything, go ahead. Sure. But I, um, I didn't. No, go ahead. You can you finish off. what you were saying. Uh, if you <laughs> I, if you if you want to piggyback off anything he said, I would say it. So that way, because it almost changes the subject a mm -hmm. little bit. But Yeah. Um, I think like, yeah. I, well, can you repeat the question so I can answer it? <laughs> I think, I think it what Vic, question. Victor was saying was like, um, is it that nobody's really checking in and that there's like a lot of young people who kind of just want to do young and care, mm -hmm. carefree stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, so some, I, I'm similar to Victor. I didn't grow up like specifically like in the church. Um, yeah. and I feel like because of that and I've, you know, youth who don't grow up in the church have already experienced a lot of things mm -hmm. in life. I feel like, cause there's a lot of temptations and they didn't really know, you know, the word of God in general. And so yeah. I feel like those who did grow up in the church, um, they want to experience it's like the reverse, like those who didn't grow up in a church want to, they crave to know like God, they want something more because they've already experienced everything yeah, versus I can like, confirm that. That's yeah, how it was. versus like yeah. those who did grow up in the church, they want more <laughs> other than, yeah. you know, church and stuff. And I think it's also like, because they didn't get to experience maybe like, different things you know as um like for them it's like church was such a checklist and i yeah. think it also has to go back like um you know having church in, in the homes you know it really reflects on like also like you know is if they're also being encouraged to you know do other things and um, grow in you know in their relationship with god and mm -hmm. as well and um and i i think it also really does a lot with prayer you know like um, even though like I, my family and I didn't grow up in a church, my mom always tells like us that she always prayed that we would like really always like stay close to God. And so, um, it's all those years that she prayed and, you know, we, I went to public schools and we didn't find a church to like, not too, you know, not too long ago. And yeah. so I really feel like it's prayer and just, um, and yeah, the youth just wanted to experience more things because they didn't have mm -hmm. that experience. Yeah. So perfect way to piggyback yeah. off what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you went first because this kind of helps me open up to what I was saying. Yeah. Um, another thing is that like, if you look at it and I'm thinking about like you asked, are those people still in church? And I said, no, not really. And so what I did want to point out is the reason why is because for those people who have been brought up in church most of their lives mm. and they go to public schools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What is a, what is a common factor that they come back with um, is that church isn't cool. Church isn't a cool conversation to bring up with your friends. Church is not a cool uh, pickup line. Church is not a, um, it, it doesn't sound like a, a fun event to go to. It's like, honestly for like, uh, it's like kind of looked down upon. You know, yeah. Yeah. And if like, you're oh, in high like school, like I, I remember um, like talking to some some young dude in high school and I was in high school at the time, too. And then um, he was talking about like, I, I said, hey, man, you guys want to go hang out? And this time I wasn't going to I wasn't going to church for like for a long time. 
Mm-hmm. So um, I remember asking him like, hey, do you guys want to go hang out or do something like that? He goes, oh, you know, I, I can't go. I, I got my first communion. And then I was like, oh, dude, I didn't even know you go to church. He goes, yeah, I'm just trying to get my first communion. Like he didn't want to make it a big deal. Like, and he also didn't want to con- continue to talk about it because when I asked, oh, what's first communion? Because I had never heard of that before. And then he's like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're in the class. <laughs> like, yeah. You're in the class. You're taking the classes. I'm sure you should know mm-hmm. what first communion is. You know, um, I still don't know what it is, but um you know, and what, I'm hearing what that. is first communion? I, I, I still don't know. Do you know? Um, you, it's pretty much a class where you learn about like the Ten Commandments, and it's like a three month class. You pretty much just read the Bible, read certain t- stuff. It is, it is for like a and it's like Catholic Catholic church. It's like it's oh, like okay. a requirement for something, right? Yeah, it's just to like if somebody is Catholic, they grow, they grow up Catholic. They have to go through all those different steps in order for them to one day get married. If they don't do that, then they have to do it even before they get married. If they, oh, that's yeah. the route they wanted to that's go through. It, okay. it has to yeah. be like you, it's you pretty complete understanding of something before you can even like enter your complete adulthood being in married life or something like that. Yeah. So when I had asked about it, they didn't know about it. Yeah. And, and it's funny because of obviously it's not a popular topic. And this guy who was a cool guy and a cool friend of mine, and I was just curious, you know what I mean? He didn't want to talk about it. Why? Because it wasn't cool. It wasn't a cool mm-hmm. conversation. If you are out in the public world and you're not like being brought up in like, like a specific uh, environment, like uh, maybe like a private school, or, you yeah. know, like based off of like a religious private school or something like that, then th- there's no reason to talk about God. Why? Because mm-hmm. it's not a popular topic. And if you're young and you're a teenager, almost like what you were saying, you know, you're still discovering yourself. You're discovering the things you like. And, you know, that's your time to either, um, you know, go find yourself or, you know, be able to be content with what you have or what you know. And uh, and more often than not, the world is very enticing. And um, out of all the cool checklist things you could do in life, church is probably down here instead of up here with skydiving, bungee jumping, yeah. racing cars, motocross, skating, um, girls, guys, all that stuff churches down here and because i'm thinking the list of things that is cool what are you going to do at church and what's keeping you there mm. Mm. so what keeps you there what keeps you there? yeah i so, i think we should ask Vic. what keeps you in church um i think <laughs> definitely like understanding god's love i mean i grew i didn't grow up in the church so for me i always wanted to do crazy things you know and it was kind of weird because you're like saying like how like young people want to do crazy things. Yeah. I remember an experience where I would come to Vespers, but then I would go to a party, kick back, go party. And then that's what I thought was fun. But then after a while, it was it got kind of boring. I was like, man, this is kind of boring. Like I had actually more fun over here because they're always like laughing, talking. They're not just sitting like sitting in a corner drinking. I, I remember you telling me like, oh, we got to go like right after you guys. And you're like, peace out, Johnny. I'll see you later. And then I'm like, all right, man, I'll, I'll see you later. And then, like, I hear you talking with, like, somebody else all the way back. And then I'm like, well, you guys went to a party afterwards? Like, dude, I was tired. Like, there was no way I was going to party after that. But it, It's actually, yeah. like, this is kind of off topic. But um, I remember going to a party <laughs> one time and oh, actually boy. saw a church member, this <laughs> oh. kid. And I was tripping out. I was like, dude, they're going to tell the church that I'm going to parties. I'm tripping out. And they're like, I was like, I was like, I was, like, I was trying to hide. Church. I was trying to hide from him because I was like, this guy's like grew up in the church. He like knows all this stuff. Like I'm, I barely started going. They're probably going to kick me out. But. Oh, I yeah. know who it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I was like tripping out. I was trying to hide from him because he's like, I was like, why is this guy here? I was tripping out. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it ultimately man, like it, it's definitely gone. What pulled me in and just really, because I was trying to find these different things in my life where I was trying to make myself feel better Mm -hmm. and those whether it was drinking partying or hanging out with friends i thought it was going to be what was going to make me happy but ultimately being in the church was what made me happy not just that but people like keeping up with you going back to the same thing like either johnny texting me or or luston calling me just random people shout out luston Yeah, yeah like you know like it was i was always like i got to the point where they would text me and i would feel bad like yeah. from dude, here yeah i'm like man dude why do they keep texting me i'm like cool thanks you know because i'm like what am i supposed to say to this like you're always sending me verses every day i'm like oh, 
I thought it was like, <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, he was real mi- brief or you wouldn't text back. Yeah. At all. They, they were, they were ministering <laughs> to me though. Like, even though they didn't realize it, like I didn't read my Bible back then, but when they would text me a verse, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to, I'll just read this for the day. But it made me feel good, man. I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. So then I, that's what interested me to like study my Bible more. Like just one small text can go such a long way. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like if you just text people, call them, um, email them or message them through Instagram or Facebook, like, Dude, that's gonna really impact somebody's life. That's true. I want to say, like, uh, to your question. Um, so, like I had mentioned before, the church is the people. It's not. It's not the building that you go to. So, what keeps me in the church is the fellowship with the people. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. feel like another reason why some people leave church is because the wrong kind of fellowship is being given. Mm-hmm. Um, not in a sense to where like the people where you hang out with your peers and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Like here in this church, I've definitely felt the love from everybody. And although I'm very different from everybody, I wasn't made felt like being different was bad. And I was accepted and, and, um, um, the relationships that formed with people. I mean, I could literally talk to these people from the time that Vesper started would be at like seven o'clock and we'd be here to like almost midnight or two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And like just talking yeah. because it was good conversation. And we'd have a Bible study before and then we would just talk real life after. And, it, and that would be something that would make me want to come back every week. But on the other mm-hmm. side, on the flip side of that, there are different age groups in churches. And I feel like this creates a gap with some churches. There are some churches that are very impersonal and very big. So you go to these very big churches with all these pews and chairs and stuff like that. And they'll tell you, say hello to the, uh, good morning to the person next to you. And you're like, oh, good morning to the person next to you. Uh, but you don't know that person. Uh, yeah. And that person is probably not going to care about you at the end of the day. And they'll talk afterwards. Yeah. yeah. It's very impersonal like yeah. with, with like stuff like that. And then there are other churches where there, there's like a smaller congregation. But these smaller congregations have like um, there's, there's the older groups, uh, people who have been here for a while, um, you know, the elders in the church, stuff like that. And sometimes... Uh, just the generation gap creates um, some kind of barrier. And that also kind of pushes people away from church because, um, I mean, I, I could even say, like, there's been some kind of things in, that has happened where I've almost been like, what? Well, that sucks. You know, like, um, I like uh, I showed up to church one time and I just had jeans and a t-shirt and everything like that. And then somebody came up to me and was like, oh, why aren't you wearing a tie? Or why aren't you wearing a collared shirt? Or why aren't you wearing, wow. you know? And I'm all like thinking like, um, I just came as I am to church because I wanted to hear the word of God. I didn't yeah. think that my clothes mattered. And that's, that's a deterrent uh, for people to come to church. And like, I should mm-hmm. just, I, me personally, I praise everybody who walked through the door. Mm-hmm. that I knew would have a hard time walking to the door because church isn't cool. If you brought yourself to church and you walked through the door and you're a young person or even an older person or anybody who's kind of like has that mentality, like is church cool or whatever? And you know, it, they're still borderline on the fence or something like that. I'm not going to say, how come you didn't dress up today? Yeah. I'm going to be like, thank God you're here. Glad right? to have, glad to have you. Glad to have you here. Yeah. You could be in swimming trunks in a tank top and I would not care. No. You know? Yeah. Or um there's there's also been times where, you know, um certain type of music is too offensive for for church. Even though it's still praising God and the lyrics are like uh like uh, just amazing or something like that. You play the guitar a little bit too gnarly mm-hmm. and, and it's it's too much. Or you, you have a drum solo in there and it's like, well that's a bit loud. And it's kinda like Kind of pulling what you've been saying about deterrence and then what um, what Victor said earlier about um, about young people leaving. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot of the relationships, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, if when you're young, and I mean, we're all young, but like when you're, you know, in your teens and you're looking <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, you're looking, you're looking for your place in the world, you know, you're just trying to figure out who you are. 
and what you want to do with your life. And you're just trying to fit into whatever group you can. Um, I, and I felt this when I, you know, went through that phase is um, a lot of times you feel like you don't really have a spot to go in a mm -hmm. church, you know, because like you were saying, yeah. you have all these different generation gaps and you might not necessarily have people around your age or there are people around your age and you just don't click with them. Yeah. yeah. And for when you're when you're young and, you know, that matters. very impressionable. Yeah. All of that really lot. matters. Because if, you know, I know people, I have friends that the only thing that kept them in church, the only thing that keeps them in church are the people. Are right. those relationships that you build, yeah. and you know, it, a lot of people don't build that, yeah. and they leave because of it. Yeah. If it's you sad. If you don't have it, or you don't keep it, then it just goes. Yeah, and and friendships do come and go in churches and stuff like uh -huh. that. Yeah. But, um, I I know that there's a good amount of people that uh, that were very strong in coming to church, and uh. Just even being in a youth group with these people, what everybody brought to the table was like amazing. Um, and you know, people are, it's, it's funny because I feel like I was in this youth group um, and um, I was a youth leader in this youth group and, and all these younger people that were there that we were trying to teach and share with and mold and stuff like that and help you know, um, kind of be the example. And some of these people were like, ministering without us trying to say hey you should go talk to that person you know they would just do it on their own and it was kind of like amazing because you would see the fruit that was coming from being connected with everybody but those same people that didn't stay connected with whoever they felt close to in the church they they they're not really here yeah. and it shows yeah and it's it's a bummer because it's like I feel like what what's the real reason why people do anything, right? So it's like interest, right? So if your interest is peaked, then you're going to be there. But if your interest isn't peaked, then you're not going to be there. Robin, I got a question for you. Sure. You said you didn't, you didn't necessarily grow up mm -hmm. starting the church. Mm -hmm. And Johnny's talking about interest, right? Mm -hmm. Peaking your interest. What piqued your interest into coming to church in general? into that's like a, officially coming to church not yeah. checking oh, the box that yeah. that's a good question it's actually um what you guys mentioned i i was craving um um connecting with other young people who had the same um interests and morals as like i did who because mm. at that time um a lot of my siblings and i like we we had friends um who were not christian and you know they all had other interests and so like when we would go to church um, or do anything like church related, we wanted to connect with other uh, youth and to be able to, um, I don't know, it, it was just like this interest that sparked. Like, I don't think it was anything that really like drew us because we, we, it's not like we had, it's not like it was kind of like we saw young people connecting together. We just, yeah. we just wanted it for some reason. Yeah. Like we just wanted to connect with other young people who are also, um, who had the same interests and beliefs as we did. Um, I don't think it was anything like special. We just wanted to. Um, and so, um, and it, I think helping us stay in the church was connecting with the young people. Like, like you said, like, I remember visiting your, this with your church and you guys would have long conversations that would last like long nights. Like so, and like, I, but you know what, those are like really fun, memorable moments. And I really think it's the experiences that also like, help me stay connected to yeah. like to remain in church like i'm um, going to mission trips or um you know even after sabbath just going to get boba you know it's like just like as friends and just connecting and talking and laughing and those are like my favorite like moments and yeah. that really think the things that i look forward to mm -hmm. you know um and even now you talked you, you talk about god like wow yeah we could do that for church like that'd be a really good amazing idea as you connect and you build and you know something like amazing together and yeah. it's, it's it's awesome so i i hope that answered the question but it yeah. was it did. yeah it did. it absolutely did how about you Vic? or did you kind of already answer the question but i want to say like 
in the events of you coming to church, is there ever a time or a point where you felt like maybe you don't want to come back? Um, yeah, for sure. When I would miss. You would miss and you were like, I already missed one. Yeah, and like it, I guess because I was just melancholy. I would miss <laughs> one Sabbath and I was like, you know what? I'll go next week. But then the next Sabbath would come like, you know what? Maybe they're going to say something to me. I think it went off for like three months. <laughs> Dude, I, mean, I remember I, I like missed. asking, I remember asking, dude, what happened to Vic, man? I haven't seen this dude forever. <laughs> and then Lucian's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text that guy. And I then, just so, felt bad, dude. Like I felt bad. That's probably the only time I felt like I want, I, I just didn't feel comfortable coming because I would miss so much. And then, and then Lucian's like, bro, whenever you, whether you're, you're hungover, that's what he said. Whatever, whenever, if you're hungover, come to church. If you're high. Yeah, he's like, trip. if you just want to come for food, just come for the food. I was like, all right, then I'll, I guess I'll be there. And that's sometimes I would just come for the potluck. But I mean, I it, was, it, was, still, it was still the fellowship. <laughs> and, I was like, you, you, want to, you want a free meal? Just come down to church and afterwards we'll do potluck. Or even Vespers, because we always try to do like food with Vespers. Yeah. And then we'd be like, you know what? Are you, we're going to have this thing and we're going to have pizza. Or we're going to have this thing and we're going to do haystack nachos. Or yeah. we're going to let you know. And like I didn't care if anybody just showed up for the free food, or if they showed up for whatever, but they showed up. Yeah. And I think that's funny that you say that because there are some times where people they miss church, and then then they don't go right. So then there's this there's this lengthy period of time, and sometimes they'll even have like a valid excuse like, oh my my grandma just died, or mm -hmm. oh uh, uh, this just happened, or are we we're on my family went on mm -hmm. vacation this month. Or something like that but then when they come back and there's that uh, ability to come back to church and then there's this absence and you're kind of like oh yeah. i kind of don't want to go back or there's even been times where um you know i've talked to um, some close friends and they were kind of actually older than me and they had gone through a loss and i went to talk to them uh just because i i really miss that person so i went to go visit and uh and thank them for all the things they've done in my life. This person um, said, like, yeah, I just feel like I haven't gone to church in so long. If I come back now, like, I don't want to hear the people saying, where have you been? I don't want people asking me, you know, all these questions. I just want to be able to go back and, and just go back to yeah. the way it was. And I told them, like, hey, you know, it, you, you're gone for a while, so people are going to miss you. And, yeah, mm -hmm. some people are curious and whatever, but that doesn't mean that like that's something that should hold you up from going to church and i remember after i had said that and i said people just miss you they want to see you you know what i mean and i was like i i could have done that so many times before too um i was like but you know just show up and like for the people that um that are there just to enjoy your company just enjoy their company and for the people that aren't there uh that just want to know hey where you been how come you haven't been here and all that stuff i was like just don't worry about it mm. and um and then the following week i saw that person in church and i was just really happy but then after that i didn't see them come back and i think that they got a little bit of, of the dose of what they didn't want and mm. it just mm. when they came back and they got exactly what they didn't want they they um they just didn't want to keep up with it and and that it, it was kind of heartbreaking but i mean it happens I think it's just that fear of being judged, of, yeah. you know, yeah. you, That's, regardless of what the reasons yeah. are. And you feel like you have to make up an excuse why you didn't go. And it's like, you know, it could be, like you said, valid reasons. And um, and like you also said, people are very curious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people yeah. are naturally curious. And so, kind of like with, yeah. what Dawson say, was saying earlier, like in the beginning, that some people are on the verge. Like it's, they're just waiting for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can just, all right, this is my turn to leave. But I, I just to like um, share this, I, I think in Hosea 4, 6, it talks about that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm. That long term, the reason why I feel from uh, from the young person's perspective, why they leave the church, because they don't really understand the concept of God's love. Right. Um, because sometimes church members or churches don't really reflect that to them. That's I agree. true. I yeah. agree with that in, in a sense to where there's there's this kind of repelling argument where if you 
sometimes you go to church and um i like i like the bible verse that kind of comes to mind but you know some people go to church assuming that everybody goes to church should be real churchy mm. and so what i mean by that is you know if you read your bible then you should be very nice you should be generous you should have the turn the cheek mentality you should um always be loving you know um anything and everything above that comes with the fruit of the spirit anybody who goes to church should be that person and then when other people in the church are not that person or they kind of seem like they've been going to church for a while and they're still not that person or something like that then they start thinking well this church is full of hypocrites yeah right mm -hmm. and so like now i'm in a church where all these people are fake or all these people like are supposed to be really nice and accepting and understanding and all this stuff and these people are not accepting and understanding mm -hmm. then what's the deal here you know and so when when they get that then there's kind of like this feeling of hypocrisy and you don't want to be a part of this hypocrisy no. and so it kind of detours you away from church but one thing that we need to take in consideration is anybody who's seeking jesus is under construction mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how long they've been under church uh, under the church roof or hanging out in fellowship or whatever but literally you are under construction every single day and god is working on people and some people are more stubborn than other people and we can't take those people as examples of christ because christ is the only example of christ yeah. and all we have to do is try to strive for that mm -hmm. and uh but i feel like it's very deterring when you, when you come to church expecting people to act christ-like and there are some people who don't act Christ-like. And you end up feeling either more judged or misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And so um, kind of just to switch into another gear here, uh, we did have someone come uh, and, and uh, send us a question in over the Internet. And it says, uh, why do you think it's important to have a relationship with church as well as God? And I'll leave that open to either one of you guys to answer, but it's kind of a really good question. Um, so I recently got like a, like a trainer and this is kind of going to your question and it's just for count accountability, right? He'll like text me like, Hey, did you work out today? I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. You know? So it's like, <laughs> I think that's why it's important to have that, that, uh, that connection with young people, not necessarily to, uh, there's two different ways that people can, um, can you repeat the question? Sorry. My, my, my <laughs> Don't one. even worry about it, man. I have ADD, so like sometimes I'll be here and there. But it says, why do you think it's important to have a relationship with church as well as God? Church being the people. Yeah. Um, I guess because young people want that community, you know, from what I've met before. Um, there's some young people that when I used to work in Indiana where I think there was, when I first got there, uh, there was a list of 73 people missing that didn't go to church anymore. And there was like 20 young people that didn't go to church anymore. Right. So I asked them like, what have you guys done to reach out to them? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Well, that's, that's the issue. We haven't done anything. Right. Just, we have to call them visit them yeah it's not like a like a club yeah where not it's too. like you put this big old sign up and it's like well whoever comes comes yeah. it's a it's up to them you know church is a community so yeah. like if you know it's a relationship you you yeah you get back what you try to give into it well most of the time you know yeah more mm -hmm. or less yeah and that, that may not be 100 percent. yeah and i think that's why it's important to have a good relationship with the church because if you don't have that good relationship then how are you how are you going to know who's coming who's not coming um, like some of them were like, I didn't even know they were having this. Yeah. Like, well, here, let, let me get your number. But, um, it's, it's important to have that relationship with the church just cause you give them that, that option if they want that safe space to come here. Cause yeah. for me, there's times where, I mean, I knew Vespers was always here Friday at 7 PM, even if there was one person or mm -hmm. two, like I always knew I can go there. There's times I, I was tempted to go to a party, but then I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to go check it out over here, you know, but, um, it always gave me that place to go, you know, where I can talk and hang out and, or maybe just sit there, not do anything. 
Charlie made it sound like you were this really cool dude, which you are. <laughs> but um, he made it sound like you were this really cool dude, and that like, um, like I honestly, when when you showed up and everything, like I didn't know, like, if you were gonna dig being in that scene because like I had asked if like you had gone to church before, and and he said it, it didn't sound like you did, and so then I was kind of like. Yeah, I was like, all right. Well, I, I I wonder if this is this guy's scene, or if if this is gonna be cool for him. Yeah. Qu keyword being cool because I really threw that out there. You know, people yeah. don't think church is cool, so yeah. I mean, I didn't think if you're gonna stick with it, and you did. Yeah, and I'm in that same situation right now with my nephew. Um, we went on a road trip, and and I kind of what I like to do when I like around young people. You know, young people want to experience life. Mm -hmm. They don't just want to be stuck at home and not do anything. For me, when I was in Indiana, I took two of the youth to go to, I, I was like, hey, we're going to go to New York. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to go to New York. And we took them, but I was like, but we're, when we got there, I was like, we're actually going to feed the homeless, mm -hmm. not just to walk around and look at things. Yeah. Like, oh, but they were cool about it. So with my nephew, I told him to go on this trip with me. That's why you went to New York. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and we, my nephew came. And now I, I've been having Bible studies for two weeks with him. But I'm in that same situation where you're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. I'm studying with him. But then in my head, I was like, hey, bro, like, if you don't think this is like, like, you have any questions or in my head, like, I'll just think like, maybe he thinks this is boring or it's not cool enough, you know? And, but he's like, no, this is cool, man. Like, he just wants to have that friendship, that fellowship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what people want. People want companionship. Mm -hmm. To give you my answer on that question, um, having... You need that bond with people first, right? Especially if you're coming mm -hmm. to a church and you don't know anyone, you don't know anything, right? Those those people, those church members, they're gonna be they're gonna be that that first that first link. That you make. They're gonna be what keeps you there, or what 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 gets your interest, right? Right. And then you start getting more interest, and then eventually now you're you're you know working on your own relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 important to have that those bonds with people, but I mean, the only reason you know, you would gain those bonds is um, what am I saying? It's important to gain those bonds, but it's it's also important to you know, have that relationship with God because that's what's going to save you in the end. You yeah. know, it's not going to be with people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, kind of to go with what you're saying, it's just something that I've thought about. Like when I came to Whittier, I didn't connect with anybody it was just Lucin and johnny it was like i never really got to meet any other church members to be honest like i i was i've been a, i was a member here for like four or five years never ever did i ever meet any other church members like i mean i saw them but i felt like i never they, got to know them you never really yeah you never you would oh, you, were, you were like here just going to vespers yeah and yeah. you didn't really show up for church church yeah i remember when you did show up for church i was like he came yeah. <laughs> you know? but yeah so I like when we I think that's something that needs to be done is like obviously more people need to be encouraged to reach out to even if it's somebody young or sitting by themselves just to reach out to them talk to them be more intentional um cuz yeah yeah What about you Robin do you feel like uh why do you think it's important to uh, connect with the church as well as God Yeah um I think like just to go off what everyone said, um, you guys had really good points, accountability um, and just that connection. I, I feel like even like what Dawson was saying is like that church is kind of like what connects you. And I I have seen that personally through experience because, you know, the reason or how I got to know God more was through the church members. And, you know, one of the church members was willing to give my family and I Bible studies. Oh, and man. so I oh, feel like okay. God created the church for us to connect and help each other grow and keep each other account accountable and yeah. to nurture each other and to help each other grow and uplift each other. And so I feel like, you know, it was God put those people in our lives to help us get to know him more. And so because of that, you know, we did learn more truth. And from there, you know, our spiritual walk, you know, grew, right. you know obviously it's always a struggle but it continue it grew. that's how it started and how it grew absolutely yeah and then you know the bible says in genesis it says um it was not good for man to be alone no mm -hmm. and so like i feel like um it's funny that that 
that verse comes to my mind because um, there's a reason for that. The accountability is definitely one thing, but the companionship is another thing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have confirmation in things that you do that is right and to have um, correction in things that you're doing that, that's wrong, like it is beneficial to have somebody say, oh yeah, that's that's not a good idea. Or, you know, or if it's just somebody to agree with you or listen to you or whatever it is, but just to have somebody else with you, it makes a big deal. And I think that even just going into church for people who don't, I remember going to uh, Calvary Chapel churches when I was a kid and they had classes for the young people. And I would go into those churches and I wouldn't know a single soul in there. Mm -hmm. And I would go in there. And of course, the guy who's given the message, really cool guy, mm -hmm. uh, has a good heart for God, really good at teaching the message. Thankful for those people. But for everybody else I sat next to, I either felt like their parents dragged them there and they didn't want to be there or... Um, they were so involved that they were only involved in, in, in whatever ministry they were doing. Mm. They weren't involved in the church. Mm. So for me, I just sat there and um, I said hi to the next person next to me and I developed no relationship. And every single time my parents wanted to go to a Calvary Chapel church, um, that's all I got. And, and you know, like I, I know that the, the speaker or, you know, the youth pastor or whatever, I'm sure that if he could have given me more attention, he would have. But I'm not the only person in there. You know, what I, mean? I may be the only newer person in there, but like everybody else is going up to him afterwards and be like, hey, man, thanks. And they're like talking to him about the regular conversations they have. And I have nothing. I have no history with anybody there. And therefore, did I want to keep coming there? No. Church no. was a very uncomfortable place for me. Yeah. Because there was no connection i didn't have like, somebody to be with growing up like just going to okay different churches um like i just felt the same like i don't know any of these people you know you'd have like one person that's like oh hi how you doing you know trying mm -hmm. to get want to know about you but it's like well a good a lot of the times you know it's not like people are coming over to just you know try to talk to you and yeah. you know, actually fellowship with you yeah you know it's a lot of just hi happy sabbath yeah, yeah. See you later. Right. It's a lot of that. Yeah. And, uh, it deter it's uh, it's definitely deterrent. And yeah. yeah, like I said, it wasn't. It's not good for a man to be alone. Mm -hmm. That just goes for anybody, not just a, a man, but like, like uh, one thing I was like when I was uh, listening to Robin say that like there was somebody who came and gave Bible studies in the church. Was there somebody like specifically in in your um, group of uh, peers that you felt like? Um, kind of really helped you walk your spiritual walk? Yeah. Um, not a specific individual, but I, I feel like a lot of a lot of the youth in their own ways, um, even if it was like the smallest thing, you know, um, the one that comes to mind was the person I mentioned earlier was how I met like you and Luston um, at like one of the, I guess, the first big youth event where all the other youths from other churches came. And that was the first time I met other youths at other churches. And I feel like um, because of that, like because I um, like through the conversations and just getting to know you all um, and loose and sparking of questions like, oh, why don't you have Robin go do, you know, this for a certain position in the church, yeah. like for to, you know, be in charge of like doing this youth event or something like that. Um, I guess someone just believing in you yeah. and just um, really, I feel like really encourages the youth like wow okay i have that potential to oh, do yeah. that you know um you know i because you don't see yourself as that but if someone else sees and encourages like wow like i don't think i can do that but if you think i can do that sure i'll give it a try and you yeah. know you never know and from there i feel like you grow and for me personally um like i grew i think i think lucid mentioned to one of our youth at a church when we first started going was like why don't you have robin as a youth coordinator mm -hmm. like for the church and you know as I, I know, you know, I'm sure they probably hesitate. Like, she's very, she's really new. She's new to the church. Yeah. Um, but she's like, yeah, but she has a lot of potential. And, you know, th there's so many, you know. They're like, she doesn't talk a lot. Yeah, either. and she's like, she's quiet, you know, because I was also quiet. Like, I didn't talk a yeah. lot. And so 
Um, but eventually, like I did, I did become the youth coordinator, and yeah. because of that experience, I was able to learn a lot yeah. um, and grow my own personal walk with God because I felt like, you know, these young people are looking at me, and I wanted to be like a good example to them, and so I made changes in my life, and so I, it. It was a lot of growing. Like I started reading the Bible more because of that. And yeah. It was a lot of experiences that I guess um, that came all together to help me grow as a Christian. So yeah. Yeah, yeah you were given that responsibility and, yeah, and, six, and you, yeah. you kind of just took it, you know? Yeah. That was cool. And I, I liked it. Uh, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay, because yeah. I was like. What, what you said I, like really made me think like um, when, when somebody believes in you, yeah. it makes a big difference. And like, I think that's another thing that um you know like i was saying earlier when you mm -hmm. go to some churches and you don't really feel that connection or something like that you obviously don't feel like someone believes in you mm -hmm. to do anything i remember coming to church and um i was a young dude i was like 19 mm -hmm. and i had met Luston and i honestly thought Luston was older than me too um so um i'm talking to him and he asked me like yeah, do you want to be part of a uh help me lead a, a youth group and um i was like um yeah, sure. You know, I, I'm down to do it. But like me, I had barely started going to church the year before. Like I had no like major experience of anything. I don't even know what that means. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I'm down for the ride. Let's do it. But just having someone believe mm -hmm. that I was capable of, of inputting somewhere made the difference. And there's a lot of people who don't mm -hmm. like have that encouragement or that belief in mm -hmm. them. And because of that, it's like, Nobody's going to miss me if I don't show up. And that's mm -hmm. what sucks. Vic was talking about, like, um, you know, when he missed or whatever. And then, you know, he was trying to get away with seeing how many different, like, times he would miss and then just probably not come back or whatever. Yeah. But then, like, people are hitting him up. Hey, man, how are you doing? We haven't seen you in a while or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, well, I matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I matter, then I want to be where I matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go back. Yeah. I'll go back. It's yeah. it means something. And the only reason why it kind of made push me back to come in was because when I went to Calvary Chapel, I went there for four months. I was going to their Sunday, Wednesday stuff, but then I missed for a whole month. Nobody ever reached out to me. The whole year went by and nobody ever reached out to me. So that's what I thought was gonna happen here. Is so, that that Calvary Chapel you made us go to that one time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, why are they messaging me? So, you know, it's. It really goes to show what texting somebody does, but yeah, I, and it's just like it, you mean something. Yeah. I think youth in general, like, like you said, they're like they're trying to you know find their identity where they belong. Where they're learning about their interests, and so at that stage, I feel like they're trying to you know they want to be they want to fit somewhere, they want to belong somewhere. Um, and I feel like personally, like it was really great connecting with the youth because. Um, if and you know being part of the church and them giving me responsibility it felt like i belong somewhere like okay like this is my responsibility to do this and and i was able to say hi to like you know everyone i felt like very involved um and so i feel like um just connecting and it, i guess it all, all the things that we said just come all together it's just youth wanting to belong um and when they don't feel belong and they like if no one reaches out to them and you know, yeah. no one's thinking about them. It's, you know, definitely, it kind of, they think, like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. You know? I you think, know, so. like, um, in, in a way where we have, like, this relationship where God talks. Um, Jesus is, like, the bridegroom, right? And mm -hmm. the church is the bride, right? And so, um, like, in that relationship of, um, or just that kind of relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of intimate relationship, somebody is seeking the other person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, makes the other person feel wanted, right? right? So Jesus is constantly seeking the bride. Mm -hmm. no, it doesn't matter what the bride does. Mm -hmm. His love for her is unconditional and unwavered. Mm -hmm. so he seeks for, for the bride. You know, the example of you know, him leaving the 99 sheep to get the one, you know, it matters to him every single bit. You know what I mean? And so for for us, um, you know, being examples of people in church and stuff like that, 
ourselves, you know, like when somebody else is in church, you know, if we are seeking somebody in that part of a relationship, it shows a sense of intimacy that you're being looked for and not in a bad way, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? In a good way, curious about you, want to know if you're doing your well-being, your, and it makes all the difference in the world. But for those people who don't feel that, it's a, it's a, almost feels like a failure on the church's part. Yeah. yeah. And I think it goes both ways, both, both ways. Cause it's like, okay, how do I reach out to this person? Who doesn't want to be reached out to? Yeah. Or because I haven't reached out to them in a long time. Yeah. And they're going to be like, dude, you never reach out to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right? like, who are you? Yeah. I was like, what? No, why? Now, why do you care for me? Yeah. Now that I'm doing this, now that I'm about to have like three babies, like why now? But, <laughs> Um, that's not a specific. No, no, no. <laughs> oh no 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 no! no, no, no. At, <laughs> yeah, no. specifically. Yeah. Mercy. I, I have. What you're talking about. I have four kids. No, but, but going it's not to, me. <laughs> you know how you were saying that he God is a relational God. I mean, even if you look at what he did with Adam, when he's like Adam, where are you? He's a God that seeks right. you, right? Even in um, I think it's in in a book called Desire of Ages, where Jesus comes back and. I think it's the Mount of Olives and he's coming back wanting companionship. That's what the, the commentary says. Right. That he seeks for his disciples, but they were, they were sleeping. Asleep. Yeah. And he wanted that comfort. He wanted that, like, the yeah. companionship. That was when he went in and prayed and he sweat blood, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so then he was seeking, like, that comfort almost, right? Because yeah. they loved him. But but it makes you realize, like, if, yeah. if Jesus needed that comfort, how much do people need it? Like, even though, like, it seems like we're going over and over and yeah, over yeah. the same no, it's thing. it's important. That's literally, it seems so simple, but that's, that's what we need to do. We need to be more um, relational with people, more like just talking to them, messaging them. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, I have a bunch of numbers of like y young people that I've worked with, with Youth Rush. I literally message them like every three months just because I don't want them to think like this guy only messaged me when we're about to do like summer programs. Yeah. Or they just need me because they want me to sell books. No, dude, like I want to hang out with you and I, and I care for you and I hope you're doing well. You know, and even if they do end up leaving the church one day, I can probably still call them and they'll pick up the phone because I build that relationship with them as a friend. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what we need to do. I mean, it's literally we're talking about the same thing, but it's that's that, that simple. It is. And that important yeah. See, for, for us who have all been in some sort of ministry, we know what it takes to kind of. pursue somebody or to make someone feel wanted or accepted or something reason why is because it was important to us so we know that but there are people who go to church and don't want to continue going to church and there are people who who find this uh, uh, uh pandemic to um to be a reason not to continue going to church and you know they're already doing life on their own maybe they feel like nothing has changed for them and so they're fine with it and there's also people who have gone to church, said, I've tried Jesus, I've tried church, and it doesn't work for me. And they're left in their own thoughts and their own ways of being already. And um, it's, it's a sad reality. And I think that, um, I think for the most part, um, there are people who leave church every day and for the people who are in church and part of the ministry or, you know, it, this topic or conversation is just eye opening. Oh, what needs to be done? What I feel is pretty simple. It almost comes down to a simplicity of of making somebody feel wanted no matter how different they are or feel seeked out no matter how different they are. And we've come from a very diverse group of people and it's still what well, I mean. I'm sorry to say that we used to have like 18 kids coming here every single week. And, and now, um, I mean, I don't even know how many of those people watch these videos or tune into church on, on the weekend or hit uh, anybody up for a or Bible even, study. Or even think about Whittier. Or even know. think about it, yeah. yeah. But the struggle is real. And I want to let you guys know that's part of spiritual warfare. Dawson, I, I feel like we're kind of running out of time here, but is there anything you wanted to kind of throw out there or ask before we kind of close up our time here? Um, not really. We pretty much, uh, I mean, like you said, we're just rehashing. Yeah. But it's it's so important. 
you know, just our, our, everybody's spiritual walks and, and having personal relationships with people who are also on their own spiritual walks. You know, it's, it's, it's so important. Um, but I just wanted to thank Robin and Vic for coming on down and chat with us for a little bit. Thank you guys yeah. much. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you guys' inputs and we also appreciate you guys, um, you know, spending this time on a Saturday afternoon to, to make it happen. So um, we normally close, close it out with prayer. Um, Robin, would you like to close us out with prayer? Sure. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this time that we can just um, discuss and, and fellowship and um, understand and you know delve in why youth leave the church, Lord. Um, Lord, I, I pray that you may give us wisdom and knowledge. May you um, guide us um, as we continue to figure this out um, and that you may reach out to those who have may left the, ch the church, Lord, and, and that you may continue to grow our spiritual walks with you um, as we continue to learn and grow with you, Lord. And bless this ministry um, and be with us um, throughout the rest of this night. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Yeah.